Good day and welcome. Our guest today is the beloved and iconic figure in Canadian pop culture. Known for his irreverent humor, sharp commentary, and willingness to tackle controversial topics. He continues to be a major influence in the Canadian entertainment industry. A man who remains a fixture in many Canadian childhood memories as the forbidden fruit of sock puppets. Starting in 1987, he quickly became a staple of much music while creating his own show called Ed's Night Party eventually rebranded as Red and Ed's Party, creating content on the FU network, starting newmusicnation.ca, giving artists a break and reminding people that you matter. His extensive experience also includes This Movie Sucks, I Hate Hollywood, Ed's Big Wham, which some say was the cornerstone for creating talent shows today, Ed's formage special of the cheesiest music videos, along with his documentary, Who Murdered Much Music? Now hosting a show called News Nobody Needs alongside Tarzan Dan and airing on 94.9 The All Night Show. Please welcome the legendary and Canadian icon, Ed the Sock. Because I start, I mean, I premiered in 1987 on a very small cable access station in Toronto. I got on much music and City TV in 1994. So I had uh, been around sort of uh, as a, uh, you know, a cult kind of thing, uh, though I didn't make anybody wear tennis shoes or kill themselves. Um, and uh, the uh, the late night show was uh, Ed's Night Party for many years. Then it was Ed and Red's Night Party. And the much music show uh, was Ed's Big Wham Bam. And I don't know how that could have really sponsored any uh, talent shows since we rarely showed anybody performing. But hey, whatever. I'm here. Ed, thank you for your time, and I, and I do appreciate it, and welcome. Oh, I should also add that uh, uh, I'm currently doing the all-night show on 94.9 The Rock in uh, the GTA, 94.9 FM, but also on therock.fm streaming, and it's from uh, midnight till 5 a.m., Monday to Friday, Eastern time, though we get calls from all across North America. So some places it's a midnight show, some places it's nine o'clock, some places it's 10, but uh, it's uh, it's great fun. Ta uh, talk tunes and tomfoolery. And I was wondering if you could take us back to the beginning of your career. What inspired you to get in to a career of entertainment? A stupidity and a lack of foresight. Uh, I mean, especially now, anybody who tries to get into Canadian entertainment, don't do anything else. Dig ditches, dig graves, become a blacksmith. Do not get into Canadian uh, entertainment. Find a career that actually has some longevity. Uh, so um, I, uh, you know, I, I looked around and saw what was on Canadian TV and said, well, I can do better than that crap. Um, and, uh, you know, it was a desire to bring up the level of Canadian TV to shake it up from being so bland, so mayonnaise and butter sandwich uh, and so stodgy. And now that you're here, you've been an icon for years, easily 25 years, if not more in the industry. With 37 all of years, actually. Jeez, 27 years. 37. Well, 37 years. Wow. Yeah. And out of your 37 years, can you recall any significant milestone or moments that helped shape your career? Well, I mean, getting my uh, my show on uh, Newton Cable, uh, may that channel rest in peace. Rogers bought it. Um, and, uh, you know, turning the, uh, the shows that I was on into uh, a show called Ed's Night Party uh, with uh, the late Eric Tunney, one of the greatest comedians I've ever seen perform. Um, and that show got, you know, it got popular people in the old days, viral meant people would record it on VHS and pass tapes to friends. And so that was important. Uh, I was approached by CBC to take the show there, but that would not have been a match made in heaven. 
Uh, so uh, Jay Switzer, may he also rest in peace, uh, contacted me. And uh, we took the show over to Chum Television. And they wanted not only the late night show, but they wanted me on much music. And that's where I started. Um, I suppose one of the big watershed moments was Woodstock 99. Suddenly, people uh, who would sneer at me in the building or elsewhere had this respect for me like I was more than a one-trick pony because I was I was uh, anchoring with Suk Yin live during the riot, and I predicted the riot was about to happen. Uh, I, I could see, I could feel it. I knew it was going straight to hell. Uh, so that was uh, that was important. Um, it's taking over Fromage in 1999 from uh, Christopher Ward, who created the series. Uh, we made it, uh, Leanna Kersner uh, produced the show, and we made it into uh, the most popular uh, in-house uh, produced program on much music. It uh, They ran marathons of it. They would do like three hours. You know, they do uh, this year or the year before, the year before that, and this year. And they would get higher ratings in the reruns than they got on their live shows. Why do you believe that is? As, as someone with your experience, why do you think that was the case? Because we started, to, rather than, Fromage used to be low-hanging fruit. It would make fun of foreign videos or videos that clearly had no budget. And I thought, that's shooting fish in a barrel. That's that's punching down. Let's look at some of these a-holes who have lots of money and lots of resources and still produce videos that are crap or have crappy messages in them or are uh, cutting corners or, you know, just by the numbers. Let's take shots at the big guys and girls. Mm -hmm. And I think people like to uh, see the, you know, these people who the other VJs uh, were kissing ass about the rest of the week, uh, the rest of the year, here was some honesty. And mostly it was, people would say, you're saying what I'm thinking. Hmm. And when we talk about taking these shots at like the, uh, the the bigger names versus the little guys, did it just call more attention to the bigger names, do you think? Or do you think it really just brought them down to the, the humanitarian level of that you could be relatable with all of them? Well, they didn't need these bigger names. They didn't need any more attention. They couldn't get more attention. We're talking about the the boy bands, the the divas. I mean, they were they were huge, and they were everywhere you turned on uh, all kinds of uh, products in advertising, on television, on the radio. Back then, people listened to radio more. Um, there were they were all over. So they they didn't need my uh, attention, and they didn't really care about my criticism because money is a great insulator. Yeah, that's fair. If you have enough of it there, it doesn't really matter how hurt your feelings get. You can cry into dollars of bills. You just dive in like Scrooge McDuck. Who gives a crap what this puppet says on Canadian TV? Uh, I'm rich. <laughs> now, you, you had mentioned earlier that you should not get into Canadian entertainment and become a blacksmith. Why is it that there's real no longevity in Canadian entertainment in your experience or opinion? Because the industry is too small and it thinks small. You know, people say we should have a star system. It's like, how? We don't have a system. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in the States, if uh, you did a good, uh, a, a good monologue on The Tonight Show, agents and uh, producers would come to you and they would uh, craft the show with you and they'd pitch it to the network and then you'd do a show on the network and then that show would end and then another network would want you for another show and you might get movie roles there's none of that here in canada mm -hmm. none of it we don't have, if you've been successful on a uh, canadian tv show uh it, it, it's like you're in kindergarten they say, all right, you've had your turn. Now let somebody else have a chance. They don't understand how television works, that it's a media based in relationships and the relationships people have with shows and with characters and with performers. So if, you're, if you've got performers or shows or brands uh, uh, that people have connected with, the smart thing to do is to continue to build on that. But instead, they just chuck everything out and they, they bring in new shows which, uh, you know, it's very hard to get traction. 
on uh, new programming, whether you're in Canada or the U.S., with all the uh, distractions of YouTube, which is YouTube is like the world's biggest refrigerator door with pictures of other people's kids stapled to it. Um, <laughs> who cares? But it's distracting. And so it's hard to launch a new show. It's even harder in Canada where they don't have the bucks for the marketing. They may have enough money for some bus ads when the show launches, but then that's it. We don't have enough. There's no Canadian entertainment media, really, that will uh, will report on you, will, will talk about you. The, enter the newspapers and, and their uh, attendant websites, uh, most of them don't have entertainment sections anymore or entertainment writers. So, you know, what the hell? How are you supposed to get any attention? No, that's fair. Is that where this your new platform came from? When we talk about newmusicnation.ca, was that kind of a driving force behind you to say, hey, I want to really put the spotlight on some people that don't have these representations? I always, on Much Music, used to say, we have a responsibility to give some attention, some lift to uh, bands that are unsigned or signed to smaller labels. And the argument was always, and always from this same moron, uh, was, well, how do you say yes to some and no to others? And I said, by saying yes to some and no to others. That's how it works. But they never did it. It was always record company uh, acts. So I wanted to give uh, some attention to the great amount of musical talent and video production talent out there across this country um, and give them whatever extra spotlight I could give them. I mean, some of them are producing great quality music and videos and getting 63 uh, views. So I wanted to give them, you know, whatever more I could help them uh, get attention. It's what I wanted to do. Unfortunately, COVID kind of uh, drove a stake in the heart of newmusicnation.ca for numerous reasons. And uh, also people saying they were going to, uh, they were gonna do things to help the channel uh, spread the workload, and they never did. And so we're rebranding re it as newmusicnow.ca and be relaunching it soon. But this time, a little more realistically, uh, not intending to make any money with it. Uh, you know, it's not going to be any commercial uh, uh, push behind it, just to showcase all these artists. So newmusicnow.ca coming soon. Coming soon, yeah. I want to ask you, Ed, do you ever get overwhelmed by thinking about the impact that you've had on so many people throughout their lifetime and in society? I, I grew up watching you. My family grew up watching you. You're kind of like this uh, this weird, iconic role model. Do you ever have that sense of overwhelming emotion of, wow, there's so many people I've impacted in the Canadian and, and around the world? No. Well, that's good. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think about that. Listen. Uh, in Canada, we don't have celebrities. We have people you pass on the street and think, hey, did I see that place, that person somewhere before? We don't have a celebrity culture. We're not the type of people that want or create a celebrity culture. We're not we're not uh, star figures. Uh, you know, I've seen uh, big celebrities at the airport, you know, when I was uh, flying places, going to L.A., and Canadians would notice them, would give them a polite nod, and they would nod back. But, but just leave them in their space. Whereas in the States, you show up anywhere where they, uh, at least back in the day when TV cameras looked like TV cameras, you show up anywhere, Americans immediately show up to the camera. Hey, hey, talk to me, talk to me. Um, uh, are you famous? Can I have your autograph? <laughs> it's very different. Um, I don't think about it. I'm just like anybody else, just uh, doing what it is I do. Uh, keep a roof over my head, put food on the table. You know, I'm no better than anybody else. Uh, no worse either. Um, so I just do what I do. If it has influence on people, I hope it's a good influence. If it's a bad influence, I can't help that either. But, uh, you know, no, I, I don't spend time thinking about how powerful I am. <laughs> so... With all of this power that you have, I mean, sometimes it does come with negative feedback and rejection. Is there anything that you do specifically to kind of push the naysayers away and, and jump past all of that negative feedback and rejection that kind of comes with the territory? What do I what do I give a rat's ass? 
about what they have to say. Listen, everybody's uh, opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got one and many of them stink. Um, and so, uh, you, you know, you don't like what I do? Fine. There's lots of other options out there. Go, go find them. The problem today is if somebody doesn't like what you do, mm-hmm. they don't just go and find an alternative for their time. They want you squashed from existence. You know, you, you know, you, you've offended, uh, offended them by existing. So it's not enough to say this isn't for me. I'll find something that is. No, they, the, whoever it is they don't like must die. And uh, that's so stupid. We have more choices and options for entertainment or information than ever before. Why would you waste your time trying to make some of it go away? Now, I understand the stuff that's toxic. There is stuff that's just pure lies um, and it distorts people's view of the world and uh, turns them into, well, basically the kind of people they always were, but this gives them permission to be that way. I understand irresponsible uh, speech. I understand wanting to shut that down, hate speech and so on. But if it's just somebody expressing an opinion that is within fair comment and it's not an opinion you share, just shut up. Just find some, find somewhere else to go. Support the person who says things that you like. All right. Um, but don't try to get people uh, who are just commenting within, like I said, fair comment. Uh, don't try and shut them down because their existence offends you. That's well said. Yeah, sometimes I come up with things. <laughs> Outside of newmusicnow.ca coming soon, news nobody needs, and working with 94.9, what other avenues do you pursue in your personal life that fuels your creative growth? Well, my personal life is nobody's business. But, uh, uh, you know, people know. I like uh, superhero movies. I like uh, documentaries about uh, history and uh, sometimes science and biographies and biography movies, and uh, comic books. Um, But uh, I also am starting up a new podcast called uh, The Ed the Sock Podcast, which will be coming soon. Probably going to be starting up something called Straight Talk from the Sock, which will be either daily or three times a week, me going off on current issues. But that may be available only to people who support me on Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com slash Ed the Sock. Because I've been letting that go fallow for a long time. Still uh, contributing to the Signature Podcast Network. Used to be the FU Network. But Mm -hmm. that was a little too inflammatory for Canadian sensibilities. Mm -hmm. Um, So, uh, and doing uh, the Ed and Red Podcast with Leanna Kay, uh, which we do every week. It airs on AM radio and is also a, a podcast where we talk about current issues that are important and uh, news that is absolutely nonsense and just fun to talk about. So it's a mix of both. And um, I, there may be some other stuff coming up. There's talk of a uh, documentary being done by some uh, celebrated documentary filmmakers about my life. That may be happening. Uh, but, you know, you know, who the hell knows? That's a crapshoot. Um, I'm sure other things will come up. But right now, that's plenty. And my social media on Twitter, which is now X, which is stupid. Um, uh, Instagram, I dropped TikTok because I hate it. Uh, And uh, Facebook, which I ignore too often, but whatever, it's there. It's neat that you actually bring up comic books. Uh, Something that our viewers may not know is that there there actually at one point was a series of comic books that you had created. Will those be coming back anytime soon? No. Uh, the ones that exist are collector's items. I didn't create that comic. The uh, Ed and Red uh, comic was created by Leanna, and she was the editor, and she was the brains behind it. She went out, put out the call to independent writer-artist teams to come up with stories. Um, we selected the story before you know somebody committed to the art. Uh, we paid them, which is rare for independent artists and writers, and we published three issues, full color, of uh, Ed and Red, uh, what do we call it? Ed and Red's comic strip, uh, playing on this strip thing. Because mm-hmm. back then we had the hot tub and girls with no tops on and crap. Um, but that's not what's in the comics. Some very interesting interpretations 
of, uh, of me and Leanne and other people uh, in art and writing. Um, right now, I have a bunch of them, but the only way to get them is as prizes. Fair enough. All right. And if you could do a biopic of any person out there in the world, who would you be? Huh. Biopic of any person out there in the world. Carrot Top. I love it. Yeah, Carrot Top. A completely overlooked talent. Now, is there something you believe we as a society need to start doing or stop doing as of tomorrow if you had a magic wand? Uh, I would get rid of social media, period. It has not been a boon for mankind. Um, I would find a way to limit the internet to um, uh, discussions about recipes or things like that. Uh, because the the connectedness that was supposed to bring us all closer together as a global community has just contributed to pushing us apart. It's allowed, you know, it used to be there was a village idiot. Now, that, thanks to the idiot, there's a village of idiots. Um, and it's because before an idiot knew they were an idiot and they shut their mouth. Now they uh, band together with other idiots mm -hmm. and that gives them some sense of power and they reinforce each other's stupidity. So uh, that's what the internet has, has brought us. That's what goes on on social media. Um, it's been, a, it's not been a benefit, a net benefit to the world. And uh, I would also stop AI dead in its tracks. Cause have we not seen the Terminator movies? How many movies we have to see where AI turns on us? It's going to happen. I mean, did you see the uh, reboot of the Battlestar Galactica series? It. How many warnings do we need that AI is a bad idea? But, uh, hey, they're going willy-nilly into it. I'm hoping that eventually uh, the result is the planet of the apes rather than just a decimated Earth. <laughs> That's very well said, and... And is there something that people tend to misunderstand about you the most? There are some people who believe that because I'm rather forthright with my opinions, rather loud, somewhat aggressive, um, they assume that means I have, I am and have always been right wing because right wingers are aggressive and loud. Um, but I've never been that way. I have always been a live and let live kind of sock. I uh, supported uh, gay rights and gay adoption and gay marriage before anybody was talking about it on TV. Um, I uh, supported, uh, you know, uh, I made uh, much music cover Carabana mm -hmm. because they were covering every white music festival, but not that. I was, you know, always been very big on the benefits of not having everyone around you that looks and thinks like you. So, uh, you know, I'm very much live and let live which these days people call woke, but fine. I don't give a rat's ass. Call me woke. It doesn't change anything. My principles have not changed over the years. Um, how they're, you know, what they're applied to, the circumstances they're applied to has changed as the world has changed, but the principles haven't changed. And, and if someone said to you, what scares you the most, what would be your reply? What scares me the most right now, AI. Okay. Yeah, that's it's, that's not going to end well. Um, so I got to get going. Is there any last question you want to ask? La me? The last question I have for you, Ed, and I really appreciate your time, is what makes Ed smile? What makes me smile? What makes me smile is uh, stomping on idiots on the internet, stomping on idiots on social media, because when they put out their stupid propaganda, putting out fact and rubbing their face in it, and then letting people see how they they just refuse to accept any facts so it invalidates everything they've said. Uh, I love that because I don't do it to change the minds of the idiots. I do it so that people who are confronted by idiots will have the answers ready to counter them and to see how to go about doing that. So any day I can squash one of those morons is a good day. Also, um, I like the uh, I, I like the smile of children and the laughter of children. But nowadays you say that and they accuse you of running a child sex trafficking ring, uh, which is perverse. Everybody should love happy kids before they're tainted by cynicism. Um, I, you know, I, I like listening to them and talking to them. That's as far as it goes. Because quite frankly, 
I've been in media for Canadian media for years and American media, um, uh, talking to kids who are actually age appropriate is better than talking to adults who act like kids. And that's it. Perfect. It, listen, I really appreciate your time. Thank you, everyone. This has been Coffee with Chris. Remember to smile to inspire and have a fantastic day. Thank I you. I didn't get any coffee. Where where where's this coffee? It, it's on us. Uh, it's on its way. Yeah. Okay. Fine. The check's in the mail too. All right. See you later. <laughs> Thanks.